So this chart shows the anatomy associated with an individual that has testes. This chart shows a couple of different images, and I'll go e over each one of them one by one and point out the structures that I see. The scrotum is the outcropping of skin that houses the testes inside. So if I were pointing at this outcropping of skin, an out pocket of skin, that would be the scrotum. Um, a testis is the singular version that ends in is, that is made plural by referring to the testes. The epididymis is the comma-shaped structure that sits um, above and to the side of each testis. And then coming out of the bottom of the epididymis um, is a single tube that extends upward and runs through the spermatic cord. The spermatic cord is this wrapping around the vas deferens and the blood vessels that are running to and from the testes. Um, the vas deferens continues through a passageway known as the inguinal canal that we see a little better in one of the other images. But I'm going to follow the testa or the vas deferens. Excuse me. I'm going to follow the vas deferens around. Um, kind of the lateral surface of the urinary bladder and back around to the back here. So this tube is the ureter and it's cut off. It, it only shows one piece of it coming, um, coming truncated, I should say, um, and the upper portion of it is removed. Um, it's also a truncated portion of the, in the sigmoid colon leading to the rectum here at the back. Um, picking back up with the vas deferens, it kind of disappears out of view just above the seminal vesicle, which I can also see from the side here. Again, this is the urinary bladder. And this structure here, which is positioned below the urinary bladder, is the prostate gland. I can see a little bit of the muscle that forms the external urethral sphincter, although I'll see a better view of it elsewhere. This is going to be the root of the penis where it's within the torso of the body, and then the, um, the body or the shaft of the penis extends outward from there. And I really can't see a whole lot of other structural details um, to the penis from this view. So I'll move to this view where things are opened up and I can see quite a bit more going on. Again, these chart images um, include structures of both the urinary and the reproductive systems as they're in close proximity and in, um, in those with testes, the urethra is shared between the urinary system and the reproductive system. So this organ here is the urinary bladder opened up. I can see remnants of rugae ridges up above, and here is the trigon marked by kind of the three points of that triangular shape. These are the ureteral openings on either side of the top part of this triangle. And then the urethra, the internal urethral sphincter, would be formed by the smooth muscle in the wall of the bladder as the urethra is leaving it. And this is going to be the prostatic urethra running through the center part of the prostate gland here. And this opening that I can see is the opening of the ejaculatory duct that's going to be coming from the vas deferens. And we'll come back to and look at another view of that um, when we look at this sagittally. This muscle stretched across below the prostate gland is the muscle that forms the constriction of the external urethral sphincter. And the name for the urethra as it passes through this muscle where the external urethral sphincter is, the... Um, that stretch, that tiny little stretch of urethra is called the membranous urethra as it passes through that muscle. And then it enters the penis and it runs within the corpus uh, spongiosum and is there called the spongy urethra or you can call it the penile urethra. This penis is cut and you can see the three cylindrical structures that make up um, the tissue on the inside of it. So the corpus spongiosum is the lowest cylinder. 
one corpus spongiosum and the urethra runs through it. Then there are two, um, each one is called corpus cavernosum or together corpora cavernosa, um, but two of those structures up above. Okay. The prepuce is the foreskin um, and the glans penis is the head of the penis. Um, glans means acorn, so it's shaped like an acorn. Here's one testis within the skin of the scrotum behind the penis, and I can see the vas deferens. Uh, actually, this is going to be the epididymis, and then the vas deferens extending from the bottom there, and it disappears behind the blood vessels a little bit. But this wrapping on the outside of connective tissue um, is going to be the spermatic cord, and then I have a pretty nice view of the inguinal canal here where the vas deferens and the blood vessels are passing from the inside of the pelvic cavity to the outside through the spermatic cord and on down into the scrotum. Um, on the other side of this view, I see a testis, and here's epididymis. I don't see a whole lot of the vas deferens on this side, but here's the spermatic cord in view, um, that wrapping. And this is going to be muscle that is likely talked about in lecture that runs over the top of that, in that area. And I think that about covers the view in that part of the image. In this part of the image over here, we're looking at the posterior view of the urinary bladder up here at the top. The vas deferens um, coming in to connect to the prostate gland down here and the angle of this really lends itself to that appearance like an angry bird um, with that sharp angle of the vas deferens serving as the eyebrows of our angry bird. The seminal vesicles or seminal glands are um, like the eyeball of the angry bird positioned inferior to the vas deferens here at the end and then the prostate glands forms the beak of the angry bird. So one prostate gland, two seminal glands, two vas deferens, and two copers or bobo-urethral glands that are positioned just below the prostate gland. Here's that skeletal muscle that makes the external urethral sphincter and the, the bobo-urethral glands are really at the, the base of the root of the penis here at the back near the prostate gland. Then we come down to this sagittal view, and again, here is the urinary bladder. This is a ureter coming down to the urinary bladder, whereas this tube that's running along the surface of the urinary bladder is the vas deferens. Okay, I can see just a tiny little piece of the seminal vesicle below the vas deferens, but I can really see where the vas deferens comes into and connects in this diagonal stretch of tube is the ejaculatory duct running through the prostate gland and meeting up with the prostatic urethra. This constriction is going to be the internal urethral sphincter and then the skeletal muscle on the other side of the prostate gland forms the constriction, the external urethral sphincter, and this tiny little section of the urethra is the membranous urethra. And then as it runs through the corpus spongiosum of the penis, it's either the spongy urethra or the penile urethra, and at the very end is the external urethral opening. Here's a testis in the scrotum. This is going to be the prepuce covering over um, the, the foreskin on the outside, superficial to the penis, the glans penis at the very end. This cylindrical tube with no urethra running through it is a corpus cavernosum. Um, and again, the, the body of the penis projects from the torso. The root of the penis is within the torso. 